Now we all know about Forest Total, but in this video I want to talk about some of the more advanced tools that can give you an expert view of malware. Video sponsor NordVPN. The first one we're going to look at is Last Activity View, which is actually a forensic tool. But if you open it, as you can see, this is by Nearsoft and it's going to tell us exactly what is happening in our system and all of our past activities. It shows the exact action that was taken and at what time and by which application. So this is kind of like a logbook of everything that is happening on your system. And as you've noticed, it is not just the things that you do. It is also everything that's happening in the background. So we have a lot of Windows processes here. So Microsoft Edge executing SVC host, but you can also see where I opened this particular folder just before the video. And it says view folder in Explorer, which is exactly what I did. So even if you're not an advanced user, you can do a lot of forensics by opening this up and you can see if a malware is doing any kind of malicious activity in the background or if a malware is executing. So this is a great addition to to the tools that you already have with sys internals and the best part is the language is so simple anybody could use it the next tool we're going to look at is a little bit more advanced it's called kappa this is part of an open source project by mandiant which is a very respected cybersecurity company and this tool specifically allows you to analyze any kind of malware executable, be it for Windows, Mac, or Linux. Now, it is a command line tool, so we're going to have to run it inside of Terminal, but don't be intimidated because it's actually ridiculously easy to use. So all you have to do is kappa.exe, and then you just need to type in the directory of whatever sample you want to analyze. So we're going to pick a ransomware sample here from a ransomware folder. So I'll just paste in the directory, and then we're going to select conti, which is a well-known ransomware. When we hit enter, it's going to analyze the program. It's going to load all of the functions and libraries that the program has, and it's going to give us an in-depth view of what's actually inside the program and the type of capabilities it has. And as you can see right away, we've got some critical hits. So it tells us that this program has cryptographic components and it has an encryption key, which is a dead giveaway that it could be ransomware. In the same line, we've got data manipulation and it has the capability to encode data into XOR which again is closely associated with ransomware behavior. That's partly what they do. They do different XOR operations. You've also got things like defense evasion, obfuscation of files and information using the encoding standard algorithm. You've also got anti-behavioral analysis components, execution via shared modules, and these are different MITRE attack categories. But again, you've got a detailed analysis of the different capabilities it has. We even know the exact methods it's using to encrypt the data, the hashing techniques, and the PDB path. We've also obviously got the different hashes. If you want to just copy that, the architecture and the file format and the operating system it's for. Pretty neat, huh? Now, all of this is coming from static analysis, but if you want to take it one step further, that's our next tool, triage recorded futures sandbox. As you can tell, you can drag and drop a file here for them to analyze. And once the analysis is complete, you're going to get a pretty comprehensive report of what the file did in an online sandbox. Now the sandbox environments are configurable, so it can be Windows 10 or 11. And the interesting thing about using this tool is it's gonna give you different tags based on what it thinks the malware might be. So for example, these have got persistence capabilities and they're likely to be ransom Somewhere. We've also got an XM rig miner over here. We've also got a scoring system that gives us the likelihood of something being malicious. So these are all a solid 10. Above five is when it thinks something is suspicious. But if we open one of these reports, as you can see, we've got the general data here. But if we scroll down, we can see a lot more. So if we look at the behavioral analysis specifically, we can see all of the processes involved. We can see all these processes in system 32. And damn, this is a long list. But if we get to the bottom of it, we can also see uh, the network activity, any connections that it made. So this one made some TCP connections to Germany. And if we scroll down, we can also see a replay of the file. So this is just like running it in a VM and watching the video. So you don't have to necessarily set up a VM yourself, run the sample inside it. It's doing all of that for you and you can configure it to run for 10 seconds, 20 seconds, however long you want. And then it's just gonna record the video and you can watch it post analysis and see exactly what's happening. So of course this is a minor, so we just have a command prompt window, but 
if it was a ransomware, you could see the ransom node pop up over here. So it's a great way to automate some of the malware analysis that you're doing. One of the reasons I've been using triage a lot in the past months is mostly the API and the ease of uploading a vast amount of samples and generating the reports because you can access the specific data fields and the specific tags via a Python script. So you don't necessarily have to get an entire report, but you can just capture those variables and then use it for your own kind of analysis system. So if you're looking to go beyond just using their tool and extend it for your own use case, I have found this to be quite useful. Now, of course, you've also got the classics like hybrid analysis, which have a similar sandbox execution capability. I just like the simplicity of triage, which is why I've been using it lately. So hopefully you're going to find at least one of these tools useful for your own needs. Please like and share it if that's the case. And let me know in the comments down below if you've heard of these tools, which one you find helpful. And if you've never heard of them, but you're kind of interested in the kind of tools I use, well, there you go. That's going to get you started for the year. Good hunting. A VPN is an essential tool if you're trying to do security research because you don't want hackers to be able to track you. NordVPN allows me to pick any location in the world. So if I wanted to visit Switzerland because it's a wonderful place, I can just click a button and now I will be connected to Switzerland, which means if a hacker is trying to track me, they're going to think I'm in Switzerland when I'm in the UK. It also has things like threat protection. They have their own cloud scanner that's going to scan your downloads. They also have a great feature called MeshNet. So if you're looking to set up a VPN to play games or so your devices can talk to each other or stream things from one device to another, you can use that. You've also got a dark web monitor so you can check if your email has been leaked or any personal details have been disclosed in a data breach. If you'd like to check them out, go to nordvpn.com slash tpsc and you can get a great deal with four months for free. Thank you all so much for watching and as always stay informed, stay secure.